Hi there, Gary and I were just marking some mock exams and we thought we'd share with you some tips and advice that we have from our experience of marking mock exams and marking the real thing after you do them in summer. Gorilla physics! <laughs> and there are three kind of key areas and they, they range from easier to more difficult. But they're different types of skills, so don't think that you're going to be good at them if you're really good at the difficult ones, that you're automatically going to be really good at the easier ones as well. So the first skill range is just being able to recall and being able to express yourself and be able to communicate science that you do understand. Um, that's, that's the easiest skill really and it's mainly going to be on the foundation tier. But it, if you haven't bothered to do a lot of revision then you're not going to remember all the things. And also the things that different exam boards expect you to be able to recall, the stuff they just expect you to remember, are different. So for example, I'm doing OCR here and OCR Gateway, and they expect you to know exactly what frequencies are absorbed or reflected by the ionosphere. And I don't think that's in any other syllabus. So you need to make sure that you've got a revision guide which is for your syllabus and that you know the things that you are expected to remember for your syllabus. The second key area is going to be the same for most exam boards, but obviously the content of it will be different. And that is being able to actually apply um, skills that you have and knowledge that you have to different contexts. And that's the difficult thing because people sometimes come out of exams in science and they say, we didn't study that, we didn't do that. There was a question about this and that wasn't what was taught to us. Well, actually, no, you do know something which you can apply to that context. They've deliberately given you a context that your teacher will not have taught you, is very unlikely to have taught you about. And that is because you need to search for something they have taught you and apply it to that new context. That's a very important thing, and that's a slightly more difficult skill. And the last skill is probably the hardest one, but some of you will do, be able to do it quite naturally. And it's mainly going to be found on the higher tier. That is being able to evaluate evidence and analyse evidence. So if, for example, they give you some data and they ask you to actually interpret that or, or make new conclusions from that data, then that is asking you to analyse the data. And if they ask you what might have been good or bad about this person's study, well, they're asking you to evaluate, and that typically is the hardest skill. But again, the more you know what that examiner is looking for, the more you know the types of answer that come up, then the easier you're going to find that skill. For example, in this set of um, exam papers that I'm marking now, then there's a question about team working, and they're looking for words like collaborate, share ideas, check each other's findings and those although you've had to actually evaluate that yourself those answers come up again and again and again so it's worth having those phrases in your mind those stock answers that you know you can put down if you're asked about team working there are also different types of questions and some exam boards use different amounts of different types some might be actually multiple choice and that might just be ticking a box or filling in a, um, a gap from a list of words that you've been given. And again, there's going to be more of those probably on the foundation paper. Then there'll be short answer questions, and they're just typically one or two marks, maybe three marks sometimes, where they're asking you a question and they're looking for that many points in their answer. And in the mark scheme, there will be a list of possible answers that you could have put. Then there are more longer ones, and they could be longer writing, in which case they're looking for you to be able to make a, an explanation in sequence. So have a little think about the types of things that you can put down and relate to it. They're looking for a more logically ordered argument at this point. Then there's going to be the quality of written communication ones in science, and they typically have two parts to them, sometimes three, but really two parts. And they're looking for a higher level of detail to get you up to those five and six marks. But you can always look for the two parts of the question there. And always make sure that you've answered every part of those longer questions. The amount of time I mark six mark questions and they've only really answered the second half of the question because that's the, the last bit that they've read. So that is all they've answered. And actually they were clever enough and they had enough information and they had enough understanding to get more marks if they just checked, have I answered all of this question? 
And the last one is, of course, the calculation question. And that is where you need to be really precise. And there's going to be a few more of those in physics, less of them in biology, maybe. But you should be ready. And those are the ones that are just like maths. They're going to take a lot of practice and practice and practice. And the more you practice them, the better that you, you will get at them. A really useful thing for you to do will be to go through any mock exam papers that your school has marked for you and make sure that you know that the areas that you struggle with. If you're someone who gets all the calculations correct, well, you're going to need to spend less time preparing for them. If you're someone who doesn't really take that time to remember those things and that's where you've struggled is just the recall questions or those kind of set explanations that the um, exam board is looking for, then you're going to need to spend a bit more time just going over those basics. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.